Hey guys, just a quick disclaimer before we start. Uh, the audio in this video is kind of bad. Uh, slobs does not do the greatest job uh, when it comes to live recordings. So I just wanted to say this is more like how things will sound in the future. I heard you guys. I'm going to be less quiet. Things are going to sound better, I promise. Anyway, let's get to the video. Hey guys, it's Mart, and we're back with another video. Uh, this is a quick one. I just made some new brushes. Uh, these just happened over the last few months. I just made them out of pure necessity, pretty much. And uh, I wanted to share them with you guys because the ones on my website right now suck. And uh, people are paying for those, and I feel bad. So I wanted to update them with stuff I think is more useful and just of higher quality in general. So uh, anyway, I'm just going to show you how I use them and... Uh, their features, I guess, um, and maybe dive into a little bit of how the brush engine in Photoshop works. Um, and yeah, let's hop right into it. Okay, so starting it off, the classic hard round, nothing special about this, except for the super smooth ends. Uh, I basically motion blurred the uh, brush stamp so that when you're doing strokes like this, you can turn up the uh, spacing and you still get super smooth uh, strokes without any of that uh, lame like circle stampy stuff. Um, and also when you release the pressure, it looks really nice at the ends in general. Um, so yeah, this is just your standard run of the mill brush. I use it for you know, everything basically. <laughs> Uh, blocking stuff in, sketching if you, you know, take it down a little bit. It's really nice for that. And even some final rendering stuff when I want to get in really tight and uh, blend some of that stuff in and just create something that looks nice. Uh, so anyway, super simple. On to the next one. <laughs> Not that one, this one. Here we go. So this one is just like a super textury, uh, blocky one, kind of specialized, looks a little bit like sci-fi or dystopia, almost. It's it's just grungy as a general rule. Uh, it's got plenty of texture and you can do all sorts of stuff with this. Wouldn't use this for rendering personally, but uh, it does. it is really nice for blocking and stuff, and if you blow it up, you can add some weird texture effects too, as if it's like a some paper thing or something. Uh, it's just a really good basis for a painting. And you can also, of course, take this down and sketch with it. That doesn't look super nice when you do that. Uh, anyway, so that one's just mostly like texture and blocking. Uh, this one is a lot more smooth, uh, but also blocky. And this one has a tilt, so you can sort of really get in and detail stuff with this if you want. I use this for everything, almost even more than the, the hard round at the beginning, just because it's, it's so smooth. It's got a little bit of pressure uh, change. You can see this is a, a little bit smaller than that, just barely. Um, and it's you can go super light with it. This is like the lightest I can go. Uh, and then it goes all the way to black, so it's just a generally versatile and, and smooth brush. Um, you could render an entire painting with this thing. Um, I usually use it for just the start, but, you know, it gets the job done, basically. Uh, this, I'll probably flash on screen a painting that I've completed using only this brush. It's very stylized, but it's also got tilt, so you can block stuff out and get really precise with it if you need. Uh, and in general, it's just a really nice brush to have. I, I just keep it in my, my active kit as much as I can. Um, I don't use it for everything, but there's some situations where I'm just like, I wish I had this. And so uh, I made it, <laughs> and now I use it whenever I need it. Uh, you can get, you can still blend a little bit with it. It it's pr pretty much 100% opaque. It goes a little bit down when you release the pressure, maybe like 50. So you can't really get completely 
blended stuff with it, but if you want, you can you can try really hard and and blend with it completely. Uh, but it's more it's more for a sort of blocky uh, shape oriented style. And so if you want to go for stuff like that, this one is super useful. Uh, veering totally away from that, this one is way more painterly. It's got a lot of texture to it. Uh, it's just kind of nice. Uh, I didn't have anything before I made this that I could really do grass with or just do that kind of soft textury stuff like fur. And I just wanted to be able to do that quickly without having to render out every strand or, or just like scribble a lot with this one because uh, you know if you're if you're just doing concept art that's fine the the hard round will get you through but um, for like final stuff you kind of want a little bit more of a traditional feel at least in my opinion uh, so you know for grass and stuff um, this works well but you can also get a really hard edge on on things with it so you can block stuff in with this too and this is mostly what I go for when I'm designing my brushes is can I get a really solid line with this thing but can I also you know paint a sky with this for example is it is it versatile enough to do you know line art and and clouds in a painting at the same time and I think this one is <laughs> speaking of clouds uh actually no <laughs> first the sketch brush uh, this one is just like a, a small hard round with a lot of texture if you blow it up, but uh, at this size it just pretty much functions as a pencil with a little bit of interest to keep things good. It's not just a, a small hard round, uh, which you could use, but I just like to keep things a little bit nicer. I think I made this like two days ago. I was blocking out a uh, a comic page and I was like... Um, it would be nice to have, and it was it was this brush. Uh, so this is really basic. You can use this as a pencil. It's got a little bit of texture. That's you know that's all that you really need to know. Uh, this one's a rake. This one I just sort of chunked out a a nice weird you know sort of like a line with a bunch of erases in it. I don't know how to describe the, the stamp, but anyway, you can use this for grass, you can use it for texturing trees, you can use it for just straight chaos if you want. Um, you can Roofs are actually really nice to do with this thing. If you stick a little bit of pressure sensitivity on it, uh, just in general, it's, it's something that is in a lot of people's arsenals, and I wanted to, to just have it, so I made one. <laughs> And uh, I get a little bit of use out of it. I'll probably put it on screen now. Um, I don't know if you guys were around for the house on the hill. Um, I don't, but uh, I did basically the whole sky with uh, this rake brush. So it's 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 got its uses and it's and it's in there. Uh, anyway, moving on as I already have subconsciously apparently. Uh, this is an inker. You can do you no know, comic style stuff with this. Uh, it's nothing super special. It's sort of based around the, or based on, excuse me, uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, shape of a the tip of a pencil. If you turn it sideways, you can get some really chisely stuff and really block out uh, like big hard shapes without having to worry too much about you know getting in there and filling everything in. You can just sort of you know, bam, it's big and bold. You can also get really delicate with it, and uh, that's nice. Like I said, versatility, all that, basically what I go for. So uh, anyway, that's that. Moving on, I use the same tip for the next two. This one's like a, a 4B pencil. It's got plenty of paper texture. Um, I was always, I don't know, fascinated by the, <laughs> the texture you get when... Uh, you're drawing on, on a piece of paper and the sort of grain comes out. I really wanted to take like a super high def photo of, of me scribbling graphite on an actual piece of paper, uh, but that never happened. I just used a built-in texture in Photoshop, and I think I got a decent traditional effect. Um, and so this one and the next one 
are basically variations of that. This one's kind of like the the 2H. That one's kind of like the this uh, fatter one is kind of like the the HB or the 2B. And you can you can just basically sketch your stuff out if you're not happy with the the way that your sketches look with a hard round. Uh, then you can do anything. And if you for some reason are drawing a piece of paper with drawings on it. If you want to get super meta, then that this is useful because it actually looks like the traditional medium. It's not just functional, but you know, pretty. Uh, this one is a little bit more intense. You can get really hard lines with this one. It's also versatile, but it's more of like a 6B pencil. And uh, this one's just a lot more rough in general and super textural and weird. But you can still get those nice, you know, shady effects if you're into shady things. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just sort of is another versatile brush that you can have in your arsenal. And uh, anyway, that's really it for now. <laughs> Uh, this is these are the brushes that I have. Uh, you can easily make a full painting with uh, just one of them. Uh, and combined, they are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> so uh, I don't use them for everything. I think I already said that, but they're super useful to have, and uh, they're definitely a scratch above the ones that are on my website right now as I'm recording this. So um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got something. Uh, useful out of this and uh, if you want you can head over to my website and get these for free because I charge you all for <laughs> terrible terrible brushes that I had before uh, anyway peace out for now um, my next video is in the works there's a script and everything it's a big one sort of and uh, that one should be entertainment so that one should be entertaining so uh, come back later i guess i don't know when but uh yeah that's it from me guys peace out and uh, see you next time